Probably 50% of M&A transactions are either not successful and or at a minimum fail to realize the investment thesis under which they were done. So, you know, one of the ways to stack the deck in your favor and be on the right side of that statistic is to develop your overall M&A organizational competence. What's different is, is leadership is getting proactive uh, they're taking a look at this as an end-to-end -end cycle um, where they can drive improvement at each stage. It's really like any other business process that's a core uh, competency to an organization. The entire M&A life cycle from uh, deal origination to deal qualification to due diligence and valuation to pre and post acquisition integration, that entire life cycle is just a business process that based upon your M&A business strategy can be fine-tuned and enhanced. When we help clients evaluate their M&A organizational competency, we're really looking at five attributes. Um, and the first is leadership, experience, and expertise. Does your company have the appropriate leadership, experience, and expertise at each stage in your M&A life cycle? Uh, does your company use M&A transactions to develop its uh, top leaders into uh, great M&A leaders. The pace and complexity of which an individual gets to experience the corporate environment for these particular events, it develops your future leaders. So when you're deliberate about that, you've got an incubator for accelerating the leadership development of your top people. The second attribute we look for is does your organization have a strong M&A organization structure and governance? Is it clear what the roles and responsibilities are at each stage in the process? You have got to think in advance on how are you going to structure the organization so you can make extremely complex key decisions on a daily basis and then clearly communicate them across the organization. So when you're able to do that well, you're able to preserve the integrity and clarity and value of the deal as you move across each of the M&A stages. The third attribute we look at is does your company have repeatable methods and tools, the basic tools that are used in the process, that you have all that canned so that you can focus on uh, the unique and complex aspects of each deal. So the fourth attribute we look for is a focused, disciplined approach to change management. Do you have a pragmatic, practical way of evaluating uh, the behavioral change that's required or that's brought upon by a deal? It's, it's critical to understand that it's a discipline. It's even more important to realize it can really be the secret sauce. It drives cultural integration. It makes sure that you retain key employees. Uh, in addition, it energizes new customers and it enables suppliers that come over to help you execute against your business. Uh, the fifth attribute we look for is does your company have an information technology platform from which to complete its M&A work? You know, most mature M&A uh, organizations utilize some type of a data repository um, so that they can not only comply with regulatory requirements involved in the M&A world, but to also be able to capture their knowledge, store their tools, uh, make them readily available. I don't want to just improve within a given transaction. I have the opportunity to take things that I learned in a previous transaction and do better in the next acquisition. I think all companies that are interested in evaluating their M&A organizational competency uh, should start by assessing where they are. If your M&A organizational competency is strong, you probably know that already. And if your uh, organizational competency uh, could improve, you're probably either in pain or you felt that pain on your, your, some of your past transactions. Um, so for me, it, it starts with assessing the five attributes that we talked about at each stage of the M&A life cycle, uh, determining where are your strengths, where are your weaknesses, what could you work on uh, to better improve and tighten the end-to-end M&A life cycle. There's no doubt that there are organizations out there that are getting tremendous value and doing a great job on executing on their M&A strategy. By being proactive, um, one of the things that they're doing is, is they're making sure that they maintain the momentum as they move from pre-close phases to post-close phases. Uh, they're making sure that at each stage of the acquisition lifecycle that they're adding value. Are we buying the best companies? Are we integrating as fast as we can? If you haven't fine-tuned your process from end to end, then you're leaving something on the table you're not taking advantage of the full opportunity. I was working with a client, the gentleman that manages the freight category, touted, hey, we're saving 10% on freight this year. And the comment from the CEO was, gosh, if, if we saved as much as you say we save every year, we should be getting freight for free. The rap that we get as professionals is that 
you save all this money, okay, where is it? It should hit our profits.